In today's lesson, we uh, will use the idea of proportions to solve problems that involve similar figures. And a similar figure, it means two figures where their angles are congruent. So look at the triangles below. They're saying that all of their angles are congruent, two 90 degree angles. And then angle B and angle G are congruent, angle C and angle H are congruent. And then also, corresponding sides are proportional. So let's look. That would say that AB, side AB, if you look at a ratio comparing it to FG, it should be equal to if you compare two other corresponding sides together. In other words, AC divided by FH should be equal to the AB divided by FG. And the same thing continues with the third side. BC divided by GH. And notice how I was consistent where A, B, and C, everything that came from the one triangle is all on the numerator, and then corresponding with the other triangle, all of those correspond to the smaller triangle. So that's just the original idea, the first idea that lets us set up proportions with similar figures, and we're going to use this idea to solve for missing sides. So in this example we have two triangles that are similar and we're going to use the idea of proportions to solve for the missing side. So we can first set up our proportion comparing corresponding sides. So as you can see here 12 and 8 correspond. 12 and 8. So I'm going to create a ratio and you can do 12 over 8 or you could set it up as 8 over 12. It doesn't matter which way you set it up as long as you are consistent. So if you look at the other ones, 9 and x correspond. So you can set it up as either, since 12 came from the larger triangle, that means 9 has to go in the numerator to correspond and x in the denominator. Or you can set it up the other way, since this time I put 8 in the numerator, x matches up with 8, so x over 9. And either way, we're going to cross multiply to solve for x. So 8 times 9 is 72 equals 12 times x. And you would be doing the exact same thing with the second example, because 8 times 9 is 72, 12 times x is 12x. And now we just have to do 72 divided by 12 to solve for x. So in this case, x equals 6. And you can always check your answer. If you plug it back in, if x equals 6, you can just divide and see if you get the same decimal on both sides. So what is 12 divided by 8? It is 1.5. And then check what is 9 divided by 6, it is also 1.5. So because we got the same decimal on both sides, we know that 6 checks. Here is our second example. Let's set up the proportion. I'm going to start with x. And I can see that x corresponds to 7 on the other triangle. So x over 7. And then 14 corresponds to 6. And since 14 and x are from the same triangle, I'm going to make sure they correspond in my proportion. So 14 over 6. And now I can cross multiply. So 7 times 14 is 98. And it's equal to... 6 times x. So now divide both sides by 6 and x equals 
uh, 16.3 repeating, which we can write as 16 and 1 third. And don't forget, you can check your answer if you plug it your answer back in here. When you divide, you should get 2 and 1 third on this side, and then 14 divided by 6 is also 2 and a third. So it checks. This time, we have two parallelograms instead of triangles, but the same idea applies. Let's look at our corresponding sides. We have 10 and we have 2. So you can set that up as 10 over 2. And then 6 corresponds to x. So we have 6 over x. Double check. Numerator. They both came from the same figure. Denominator. They both came from the same figure. So now we can cross multiply. 6 times 2 is 12 equals 10 times x. So divide both sides by 10 and you'll get that x equals 1.2. Here's our last example before our story problem. This one's a little bit trickier. We have two different rectangles, but one rectangle is within the other. So let's set up my proportion. Uh, let's see, x, so the top of this rectangle corresponds to the top of this rectangle. So we can write x over 12. And now the side of this rectangle is 5. But the length of the bigger rectangle is 5 plus 3, which is 8. So 5 over 8. And now we can cross multiply. 12 times 5 is 60 equals x times 8 is 8x. And now divide both sides by 8, and you should get that x equals 7.5. Okay, finally our story problem. On a sunny day, if a 36-inch yardstick casts a 21-inch shadow, how tall is a building whose shadow is 168 feet? So I'm going to draw a picture. Here's my yardstick that is 36 inches, and it has a shadow of 21 inches. So now they want to know how tall is a building if the building has a shadow of 168 feet. So we can set up a proportion just like we've been doing. I can do 168 over 21. And that will be equal to x over 36. And now cross multiply like before. 36 times 168 equals 6048. And that's equal to 2x. So now divide both sides by 2. And you should get that x equals the building is 3,024 feet tall. So there you go. We've used the idea of proportions and applied them to similar figures. Good luck with the lesson.